everyone, and welcome to Eye to Eye. Congress poured tens of millions of dollars into defending U.S. troops against roadside bombs in Iraq, but deaths and injuries from IEDs continued to soar. Cheryl Atkinson spoke to a man hired to evaluate the program, and he says some classified earmarks cost soldiers their lives. The biggest thing that really caught my attention was in early 05 when uh, we had heard about this counter IED targeting program, CITP. Um, and, and that was, you know, it sounds, has a great name because the number one request from the command in Iraq in, in 2004 was uh, the ability to target these counter, these IED networks because uh, it was clear they were the number one killers. Does that mean to troops. find them? When yeah, you say yeah exactly. How do you go after them? How do you find the guys that are doing it? How do you go and, and find, take out their network so they can't, they can't do that anymore? And so, uh, so we'd heard this, this program was there, and I was told that was a big part of, of my job before I left to evaluate this and make sure it's on track. And then uh, I got a call from my boss's boss at the Pentagon, a general, who said, hey, Eric, I need you to really dig into the CITP because we're hearing that it's not working. And the generals in Iraq, here this had been their number one request in 04, are now saying, hey, this is not functioning. So it was my job to do a field evaluation on this program. Do you know how much was being spent on that? Yeah, it was tens of millions at, at that time, and, it, and it's since grown, which, you know, for the number one request from the command, it's great that we, we should be investing a lot in that. The problem is that uh, when I got back to the Pentagon, you know, fast forward it, uh, nine months later, I found out working on the sort of uh, on the acquisition side or advising the people who were choosing which programs were were being selected i found out that that program had the contract for that program had been given to a company that had no absolutely no background in in this kind of sensitive counterterrorism work the money went straight from congress straight to this company and everybody kind of wondered what what the heck happened what did happen well, it was a classified contract, and, uh, and so for, for necessary operational security reasons, you, you keep the, the scrutiny low. So there's not a lot of people who know about it. Well, as it turns out, that program was earmarked from Congress straight to that company. And then the catch is that company, uh, the, the principals of that company, the two, the two founders, had, uh, were, were giving significant political contributions to the, and bribes, in, the, in Duke Cunningham's case, to, uh, to help make that happen. So millions of dollars in bribes, hundreds of thousands of dollars in political contributions were going from the company to Congress in exchange for this fast track, no bid uh, uh, program that, you know, it's, it's bad enough that that, that happens with any program. But, but in this case, I, I, was, I was furious because it, it's a critical counterterrorism program. It's the number one thing our troops needed out there. Do you think it's an overstatement to say that lives were possibly lost because of the way this earmarking process was done? I firmly believe in the case of CITP, this is where you go beyond uh, money wasted or public trust betrayed. I really believe that because of the nature of the program, because of the nature of the IED threat, yes, I think lives were lost. Were you able to find out which members of Congress were behind the earmark or earmarks involved in this case? Yeah, I was. I mean, uh, the Duke Cunningham uh, investigation was ongoing, and, and he's someone who was convicted of taking millions of dollars from uh, the guys that own that, that company that got the sensitive IED contract. Was he an, one of the earmarkers? He was on the Intelligence Committee. So, yeah, he was able to use that sensitive position to, to designate them money. But you can't act alone. You, nobody earmarks by themselves. Uh, as it turns out, uh, my congressman... Uh, who uh, was on the appropriations committee also took you know $120,000 from uh, from these guys and and helped facilitate that. Who's that? Uh, his name's John Doolittle, and uh, and so when I found that out, I last year I was, these pieces were all falling into place, and I said, well, not on my watch. You know, it's one of those moments where you think, you know, I'm just uh, he's not going to be in Congress. Duke Cunningham was already out. And so I called him and said he, he needed to resign, that that, that was wrong, and uh, it was time for a change. And he said he hadn't done anything wrong, that the FBI raiding his house was all just a political smear campaign. And so I tried to get other people that, to run, and nobody would because it's sort of a clubby atmosphere. Um, and, uh, and so I ran. So I declared as a candidate. I never ended up putting my name on the ballot because he ended up stepping aside. But uh, so as a guy who does deals in unconventional warfare, hey, uh, we did what we needed to do to uh, 
to make sure that, that people who would abuse this most egregiously were no longer in there. But the important thing to remember is that both parties, people in there right now, are playing these same kind of games where they make sure and they get these big contracts going to private companies who in turn donate not only their political campaigns but their political action committees, the nonprofit organizations that they run where you don't have to disclose donors. This is going on right now. And the biggest challenge is uh, the public information that's out there, uh, like I said, nothing has changed that would preclude this from happening again. And uh, the people that are in the most powerful positions, the chairs and the ranking members of these committees, are the ones who get the most earmarks for the most companies and get the most contributions, which creates a very difficult situation to, for change. 